Stay up. Oh, you hit it again. All right. It's all right. Huh? You got the top of my head? It's on, yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We on. Yes. Live. <laughs> <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and we'll be glad in it. Yes. Um, yes. I'm just so excited about this series. We talked about... Well, the title of the series is How You Know Where You're Going If You Don't Know Where You've Been. And that's what we talked about, but God. Uh, this is what we're going to be talking about, the flesh. Uh, and as we continue to go on, I don't really know how myself, how God is going to direct me and us, but the information that you will attain from this series, I know will be a blessing if you really just pay attention and you take heed to what the Spirit is saying to the church. I know you'll be blessed. Uh, some of those things that once bound, bound you down and had you in bondage, uh, you, you should be getting a release here. You should be getting a, a deliverance. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you. Everybody should be excited about thank that. Let me you know. Praise thank God. You. Amen. Uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 12. And, um, like I said, the day's title was Understand the Flesh. Um, uh, in this series, how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you've been? And we talked mainly last week about in Ephesians chapter 2 uh, that we were quickened. We were dead. That was our state. We were born into sin. But God miraculously uh, uh, quickened us. He made us alive. In other words, we're saved by grace uh, through faith. We can't boast. We can't save ourselves. It was something God just did. And I thank Him for that. Amen? Amen. I thank Him for saving me. And I know you thank Him for saving you. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, here in this chapter, Jesus is addressed by some of these Pharisees. And He had healed a man. And they uh, called Him the devil, or Beelzebub. And here in that verse 25 of Matthew 12, He says to them, And Jesus knew their thoughts. That should be enough right there. You know, he knows what's going on. He said, I know your thoughts. And he said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How said then his kingdom stand? So why would Satan, why would you destroy yourself? That's what he's trying to say. But then he says, And if I be Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do you children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons, devils, by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. 29. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house? A strong man is, is like the hawk. He's in control. You know, uh, every father... Uh, that lives in a home with his children, if someone says, I'm coming in to destroy your children, well, he's the strong man. He's going to say, well, you're going to have to come through me first. So he says, how can one enter to a strong man's house, this is the one who has the control, amen, and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. So when we became born again, we had... Uh, we were controlled by the strong men, or strong man. In other words, that was the enemy. Mm -hmm. And when the Spirit of God came in, what did he do? The Lord, he came in, and he first, uh, he, uh, uh, he bound the strong man. He is the one who said, look, no longer is he under your control. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then he was able to spoil his goods. That means that's something we learned in Bible study about the... Uh, the different types of spirit. We're going to get in that later on down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, 18 different uh, strong men and their goods are the things that's on that tree. So a lot of times people can, uh, uh, and medicine does it a lot, it will, it will kind of camouflage the, the, the symptoms, I mean the, 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 the problem. In other words, if you want to get rid of something, what medicine does, what a lot of medicine does, It'll just cover up for a little bit, but doesn't get to the root of the problem. Amen. So that thing is, that strong man is still there. Mm -hmm. So here, when he's talking to them, he's telling them, he says, look, uh, 
how can and one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man? So God bound the strong man in our life. Mm -hmm. The control of Satan. And we were released. But a lot of believers uh, uh, go along through life not knowing and understanding this. Go to verse 43 in that, uh, Matthew 12. It says, When the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walked through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then he said, The spirit saying this, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, watch this, he find an empty, swept, and garnished. And then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and that last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. Now, what that means is people kind of like, you know, uh, I see a lot of Christians struggle with this. You know, uh, the, the Spirit has been cast out. Now we have the Holy Spirit within us. And what happens if you don't know how the Holy Spirit works, if you don't know the, the vices of the enemy, uh, these uh, strong men can actually oppress us. Mm -hmm. Even though they've been cast out, they can oppress us. And not only a lot of us don't really recognize, because we're going to talk about this also today, some people are... There's just you're too long in the baby stage. It's a, the church is full of babies, full of babies. It's time that we grow up because Satan don't care what state you're in. He will allow. He loves you to stay in that baby stage because he, you know, he can attack us more. That's why the Bible says, Paul says so many times, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. I want to read this in the Message Bible, that verse 43 to 45. I just read, so you don't have it, so just listen up. And I thought it was very interesting. It goes like this. When a defiling, defiling evil spirit is expelled from someone, it drifts along through the desert looking for an oasis. Some unexpected soul, it can be devil. When it, when it doesn't find anyone, it says, I go back to that old haunt, you know. On return, it finds the person spot, spotlessly clean, but vacant. So we became born again. This is not, you know, uh, uh, true salvation is not a, a outward appearance. That's religion. True salvation is actually being delivered from the flesh. The flesh control. We're going to learn in Galatians chapter 5 where it talks about the spirit lust against the flesh and the flesh lust against the spirit and that contrary to one another. So that's our battle. You know, that's our battle. And we know the three battles in the, in, in the world is what? Well, the three main battles is the world, the flesh, and the devil. All right? Let me finish reading this. And then he says, Then he runs, the spirit then runs out and rounds up seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all move in, whooping it up. That person ends up far worse off than if he never gotten cleansed up in the first place. And I like this part. That's what this generation is like. You may think you have cleansed, cleaned out the junk from your lives and gotten ready for God, but you weren't hospitable to the kingdom's message. And now all the devils are moving back in. So I've seen a lot of believers so-called get saved and confess Jesus as Lord, but uh, uh, you don't see any desire. You know, you don't, you don't see a craving for the things of God. That's what we talked about in Matthew chapter 5. Remember, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and search after a righteousness, for they shall be filled. These are one of the signs of a person who's been delivered. We're going to crave the things of God. Because now we have a new nature. We, 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 serve, a, we serve a new God. A living God. So, um, I want to look at some things. Um, and... Help us to understand some things because, you know, deliverance is the key for the church today. You know, it's ironic. When I first got to the church, the church that I was going to was, was titled Deliverance City. thought it was a, a good catchy name, but I can see how I look back at it and uh, didn't really understand about deliverance or nothing like that. But I, I thought it was ironic that 
you know, when I saw that delivered city, you know, I, and I said in my mind, I must, I have to be delivered from something. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it, it's, I took the whole thing of, I have to be delivered. And each and every day, we have to be delivered. Because even though we have the presence of the Holy Spirit living on inside of us, the Bible would never tell us to cast down imaginations. The Bible would never tell us to uh, um, believe on every spirit, but test the spirits. He would never say that, because what's, what's happening? They're trying to get back in. Ephesians 4 would never say, give no place to the devil. Now understand, the Bible is talking to believers. It doesn't talk to non-believers. Mm -hmm. the, the Bible is a book for believers. Mm -hmm. So when the Bible talks about cast down imaginations, he's telling us how seasoned you may be or seasoned you may not be in a word. He's telling us to cast down imaginations. Why? Because they're going to come. We found out in Bible study, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago uh, in uh, Luke chapter 4 when Jesus was in the wilderness and he was tempted. The Bible says he was led in the wilderness and he was led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He just didn't go. He was led by the Spirit. And it goes on and explains in that Luke chapter 4, verse 1 through 13, mainly 13, the Amplified Bible says, and when the complete cycle was over of temptation. See, temptation is a cycle. You know, Satan just don't stop right there. He's going to keep on coming, see what works. Come on, but then he says, when the complete cycle was over, the, uh, uh, Satan was waiting for a more opportune time. So that doesn't mean because you, you got through the temptation. That don't mean he just, oh, man, I can't mess with him no more. My God. No. He's waiting for a more opportune time, so he's actually watching and waiting for us to fall. That's why we got to work on our own salvation with fear and trembling. We have, to, we have a responsibility ourselves to feast on the Word of God mm -hmm. because that's our nourishment. This is how we live. We talked about last week, and it talks about and uh, men don't live by bread alone, but every, a lot of men live by bread alone. They don't live by the Word of God. So we live by bread alone for our, our physical nourishment, but we have to be spirit, spiritually nourished by the Word of God. That has to happen. Amen? That has to happen. I saw this the other day, and I figured I'd put it in here. And it says, the biggest wall that you're going to climb is the one you build in your mind. Stress happens when you forget God is in charge. People get stressed out when they're no going through stuff, man. But you ain't in charge. God's in charge. He saved us. We can't boast. He delivered us. We can't boast. He quickened us. We can't boast. Amen? We become stressful when we, when we don't forget that God is in charge. The Bible says, cast all your care upon the Lord because He cares for you. But here you are over here with this situation and this problem, and you're trying to figure out why it happened. You didn't cast nothing. Mm -hmm. You didn't give nothing to the Lord. Because He cares. And if you, you know, you're still trying to figure it out, you won't be able to figure it out. It, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Amen? Mm -hmm. Last week we closed about, um, we were talking about Exodus 20, verse 5, and we were talking about uh, uh, Ezekiel 18, 18 to 20. We were talking about um, the sins of the Father down through the church. And the one thing we found out was is that uh, everybody's responsible for their own sin. But we're all born into sin. All of us. When we came into this world. So we were sinners. Amen. And I don't care how much we tried to do our best to be righteous, it will not happen. The only way that we can be righteous if that righteousness is given to us by the way of the Holy Spirit. We can't, I can't do what, I can't do anything, you can't do anything to be right with God. Remember Romans chapter 10, it talks about, Paul said, I pray that they be saved because they're going out to establish their own righteousness and not according to the righteousness of God. Some people think because they do certain things, that makes them righteous. Uh-uh. Only the Lord can make you righteous. Our righteousness is a filthy rags. It's the, it's the, God is our, Jesus is our salvation. Amen, amen. Listen, listen. Um, I got to go back to this a little bit and kind of bring us up in here until we start diving into the flesh. We talked about, you know, that was the flesh is one of Satan's biggest foods. This is what he eats. When he cursed, the Lord cursed him in Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. He says, 
since you did what you did and you deceived uh, 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 Adam and Eve, Eve first, he said you should eat dust all the days of your life. And dust is one part of us because the Bible tells us dust to dust and ashes to ashes. You know, dust, that's flesh part of us. So this is what Satan eats. And this is one of the biggest main doorways that he will come through to get to us. This is why the majority of this, majority of people out here, we're going to see later on, uh, have destroyed or, or caused all the things that happen in their life through the, through the doorway of, of the flesh. But we're going to see it. We're going to see it because it's, it's, it's so prevalent today. And it's sad that people walk around here. You know, I, I, I'm going to say this now because it's in my mind. I, I see people that I went to school with. And, uh, uh, well, not to school, but I know them. I, I know them. I don't want to have anybody thinking I'm talking about them. But um, I, I, I know that some of the, the, the wishes they might have for 2022 or some of the things they wish happened to them. And, and it's, it's so, male and female. And when I see things like this is going to be the year that uh, uh, I get married or I'm going to meet that special woman or, or this and that, and I'm like... I mean, that's okay. That's okay. But I, I, I say to myself, well, what happened? Do you know what happened? You know, we can, we, can, we can think in our minds, listen, we can think in our minds because we do certain things that'll make it right. If I get married, things will be right. Uh, you, you see what I'm saying? If I get this job, things will be right. That doesn't, you still got to deal with you. If you don't know who you are and what you have been exposed to, what's going to happen is Satan's going to have free course and like he's going to be able to pick with you and, and keep it and hold you back. Amen. You know? I'm, I'm going to say it now because I, I might say it again later, but that's what the whole thing about a stronghold is. A stronghold is a fortified place. It's a place of security. Our place of survival. And a lot of people are bound down by strongholds, by the enemy. Remember the definition, a place of security, a place of survival. So if you don't know they're there, they just hiding up in your mind. Listen, puppeteering you because you haven't located them yet because you haven't got to the point in your life and been walking with God to, to cast down an imagination. Because you accepted that imagination as being real, but the whole time the enemy's laughing at you. Come on, Pastor. Because you don't, you, he's, this is real, y'all. Jesus. And we sit here and we say, man, what's going on? And it's sad to see people in the church not growing and caught up on things that has nothing to do with their walk and their growth. It is so sad. They think because the clothes that they wear and the things that they do and the way that they sing is going to make them fit. Satan's laughing at them. They don't even know what's going on. So he continues to keep them in that, that masquerade because if you sing loud, you start to dance and all this kind of stuff that has nothing to do with your growth. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Got to get, gotta get my shout on. What are you talking about? That's a stronghold. Satan just got them just using them. So, um, what is the flesh? The Bible says there's no good thing in the flesh. You know what flesh is? Flesh can act, Flesh is actually us. Self. Take off the H and spell it backwards. It's self. Flesh is, 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 is us. You know, salvation. Salvation is us being saved from us. Because now, remember, I said, Satan, this is what he eats. When it says this in Galatians, i, I, I got to go there now. Galatians 5, look at here. Uh, praise God. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm just going with you, Spirit. Whatever you want me to do, i got to roll with you. Galatians chapter 5, look at verse 17. Look at verse 16. He said, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, that's a constant thing. We've got to walk in the Spirit. Who doesn't want us to walk in the Spirit? The enemy. So, what does he do? What does he do? He attacks. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, 
We gotta quench all the fiery darts of who? The wicked. He's throwing them. He's throwing these darts. That's why Paul says that when he was at his end and he was about to die, what did he say? I fought the good fight of faith. And we know faith comes by hearing him by the word of God. And that's why it's so sad when I see people getting caught up in this, you know, uh, hoopla in church and not really knowing what the word of God is saying. Amen. Have all kind of different doctrines that has nothing to do with Christ, has nothing to do with their salvation. Oh, the church needs to be delivered, man. There's so many, you talk about so many babies. Let's look at verse 17 in that Galatians chapter 5. Look what he says. For the flesh... Lust against the spirit. See, the flesh will never say, spirit, you want. I know you're born again. Uh, let's, you know, I, I give up. No. The battle's on now. They will do everything they can because uh, Satan still has access to us. We read there. Keep your hand there. Spirit just said go to John 14. No, yeah, John 14, 30. And we looked at this the other day. And, and I'm going to bring it to your remembrance. Uh, you know, Jesus was perfect, right? He was perfect. He was sinless, right? But guess who's not sinless? Me and you. We still have that sin nature in us. So in John 14, 30, Jesus says to his disciples, he said, listen. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world comes. He cometh and have nothing in me. But guess what? He got something to me and you. You see what I'm saying? Yes. He got something to me and you. And a lot of stuff he got in me and you, we didn't even know that he put it there. Amen. And, 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 and a lot of us actually came with it because we were born into sin. We had this sin nature. So that's why we got to understand this flesh. Amen? Amen? It will never bow down. It is something that's always going to, 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 to say, hey, here I am. What about me? Amen. Back to Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, For the flesh lets against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and, that, and these are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Mm. Satan don't want you to serve God. He don't want you to walk in the spirit. So what does he do? He uses the same old door, the flesh. The world and the devil. But that's his main door, is the flesh. You see? And that's why we got to understand the flesh. We don't understand the flesh and realize it's, it's, it's nature. Go to Romans 8. No, Romans 7. Are we here? Do we see this? Romans 7, I guess we can start from verse... Uh, let me see here. La, 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 la. Look at uh, verse... 13, I guess. Was then which is good made... Me no, let's start from uh, uh, 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold unto sin. This is Paul talking. We're talking about a mature believer. Someone who, he, he, you know, he, he knows his stuff. Now look what, he, look what he noticed. For what I would, I do, I allow not. For what I would... That I do not. But what I hate, that I do. Do I have any witnesses here? Jesus. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, 17, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So we got to recognize that thing. we got to recognize that strong man. Like, why am I doing this? I don't want to do it. Then he goes on to say, I, I, I love this, I'm, I'm, I'm finished the next verse. He says, uh, uh, 18, for I know uh, that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will which present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. You see? Say, you say, flesh, stop. Get away. Leave me alone. You cause us so much trouble. But how quickly does that go away? And when you when he, when he deceives you enough and he's tricking up and he's and he's working on your mind and oppressing you, you're doing the same thing over again. I said, get frustrated. I go, oh, what's going to happen? You know, what's going on? That's why it says here, let's shoot over to verse 24 in Romans 7. That's why it says, Oh, wretched man that I am. 
Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? So he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the Lord God. That's what the Bible says, renew your mind. Mm -hmm. See, the mind is the first battleground. That's where he's coming. We, I mean, as a man thinks, so is he. As we view through our eyes and, and, and the stuff coming in our ears, this is, all this affects our mind. And we have to make a decision about, you know, what we see and what's coming in. Amen? Amen. So, if we don't have, if we're not fortified on the inside by the Spirit, it's almost like when something comes to me now, Holy Spirit, you answer the door. Because if I answer the door, Please. it's going to be over. <laughs> I'm going to let everybody in. They got no business there. You have somebody come over your house and you're trying to get them out. God have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> it says here, I thank God through Jesus Christ the Lord, so that with my mind I serve the law of God, but with the flesh I serve the law of sin. Go back over to uh, uh, um, 20. He says, For if I do what I would not, there's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He says, I find then a law. Listen, we've been delivered from the law. By faith, we've been delivered. Because the law brought bondage. Amen. We, you know, with, with man it's impossible. But all this is possible, you know, through the Lord. Yes. See, God can God can get us through things. I remember a time I couldn't I I can't stop smoking. You know, this was years ago. I couldn't understand it. And I said to myself, I, wait a minute, I have, you know, power over these things. But it's not in me. I tried it myself, you know, not really recognizing the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And I tried to do it myself. I couldn't do it. Until one day I said, okay, Lord, you do it. And I trusted that he would do it, and he did it. Amen. Yes, sir. I trusted that he would do it, and he did it. And that goes for anything else in our life. So we are learning each and every day to... to to, to not to be like ourselves. Because self is bondage. Galatians 2.20 It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. I've been crucified with Christ. Now we're going to look more about that at the end of this message today about being, being crucified. Because <coughs> crucified means to, to kill. It means to no more life. So by faith, just like we, we, we present our bodies a living sacrifice. You notice he said living sacrifice. I'm glad he said living because some folks be killing themselves. Yeah. So we present our bodies a living sacrifice by faith to say, God, here you do this. You handle this because I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. So we put that trust in God. His, his ability and his spirit, spirit has ability for us to overcome. I'm telling you right now, so many people in the church are suffering in the realm of their mind. I see it. I see it. Because, you know, you got, you, you got, you got, some people have spirits that are like, when they gang up, Jesus. They tear up. Yeah. My God. I'm serious. They tear some folk up. Believers. 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 And if they never recognize them, you know, because they think it's normal, mm -hmm. they think it's okay. But we can be delivered. We can be delivered. We can be set free from this bondage. Thank you, Jesus. Cause Satan, that don't mean he ain't gonna come knock on the door again. Say, so, yo, what about me? I've been living here for twenty years. Remember that spirit said, "Look, hold on, hold on, man. I'm going back to where I used to have, where I used to tear you up. Now I'm bring something. You ain't bringing nobody, but I, I recognize your knock." <laughs> You got me in trouble last time. So we got a, the Bible said, that's why the Bible says in uh, uh, Proverbs 4, 23, he says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it, what? Flows the issues of life. The heart is the, actually the, defined as your mind. You got to guard it. He's coming. He's coming. Oh, listen. Uh, I'm trying to stay on course, y'all, here. Uh, uh, um, I got to get back to this Galatians later on, but.
we got to kind of grips with that. Look at, I think it's one verse I didn't really look at, was 22, and that Romans 7, it says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. You see that? Mm -hmm. warring, another law, warring against the law of my mind. It's not going to stop, y'all. This is Paul telling it. Paul recognized this. He's giving us a hint here. Look, it's going to happen to you. Warn against the law of my mind. And listen, and bring into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So this is constantly going on. Let's take, for instance, an old flame you used to have. Okay? <laughs> an old fling, or whatever it may be. However it was. And it just, it, it just turned you on. But it didn't turn out too good because it's no longer happening. And they went their separate ways. But it, 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 it made a, a dent in you, mm -hmm. in your psyche. It made a dent in your psyche, and it was something that you, you know, never forget. Because they made you feel so good. <laughs> you listening? Mm -hmm. So, uh, now, it's over, but you, you still crave that feel good. You know, it could be a conversation from the other person, or the way they treated you. So as you move on in life, what happens? You expect that somebody else to be the same way. So if you don't get that, what happens? You start to get frustrated. And you start to kind of like, even like, well, won't you do this? Or you don't do this. Kind of going, wait a minute, hold up now. You see? But was, was that whole relationship, see, I'm trying to slow down, y'all. I'm just so excited. I, I, I've noticed that our involvement with the flesh from the from the uh, our teens up that we did some damage and we got to go back and say hold up you we got to clean up this house because I had a, you know the Lord wants to move us into a, a realm where you know we're, we're 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 confident in him and not in ourselves we're not being bombarded by evil spirits or oppressed by uh, attitudes that make us ugly. You know what I mean? We, we call ourselves believers, but somebody else looking at us like, you, you you still acting like this? First Corinthians 3 talks about, Paul says, I can't come to you as spiritual. You, you're carnal. There's so much strife and division. You're acting like, he says, you're acting like ordinary men. So we, we're different. We're peculiar people. We're a rural priesthood. We're different now. We have come from the world. We don't act like that. Not putting them down, but we don't do that. We don't roll like that no more. Why are we still rolling like that? See? That's bondage right there. Lord have mercy. Listen. Mm. The flesh is a natural, is a nature of thinking, living, and acting that is, that is against the ways of God. It affects our mind. It affects our living. And it affects the way we act. The sin nature is the flesh. Listen. Salvation is deliverance from the flesh. Amen? Amen? God provides that deliverance through His Son. The flesh must, listen, the flesh must die. This is salvation. See? When the Bible talks about, and we always use the verse in Romans chapter 10, verse uh, 9, if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now watch this. It says in that verse 13 in Romans 10, it says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's salvation. That could be a one-time person being saved, you know, for the first time, but that could be almost every day. Yeah. Lord, I'm calling you, you help. Because my flesh is, 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 is getting the best of me. If you said in my corner, name of the Lord, shall be saved. There's salvation. So, listen, praise God. So, the flesh must die. This is salvation. In other words, because the flesh is motivated by the voice of who? The enemy. You see? Yes. Now, we give them permission because we want to. And our you know, old nature. We want, we want some of these things. Can't blame it always on the devil now. There's some things we want. You see? And we figure, you know, we we won't blame on the devil. The devil stand standing on the side of the road. Why do you always blame yourself on me? Amen? The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, flesh cannot please God. It cannot 
please God. It is corrupt beyond repair. I don't care how much you dress it up. You can put on something to say, I, I look good. <laughs> but it's going to come a time you got to take all that off. And you're right back where you were. Amen. The flesh is, is, is corrupt beyond repair. Jesus, uh, uh, listen, the flesh in a saint is the same as the flesh in a sinner. Because we got born again. Born again, what happened was that we got the new birth. Our innermost person in us got born again. The flesh didn't. I'll tell you something. I did not know this and understand this when I got to the church and got saved. My flesh was going off haywire. It was like out of control. So, but now since I had the spirit, I had the spirit. I can recognize. I can't stop doing this. I can't. Well, you know, I will go to church, then I'll leave church, and it was like I was never in church. I was doing some of the same old things. Come on, somebody. Amen. I said, this cannot be. Then I really start digging in the Word of God. I said, I, this is not, because my conscience was killing me. Mm -hmm. The next week I go to church, oh, come to Jesus. And I'm like, man, come on. You, you, did you come last time? <laughs> You're still doing this stuff. So every week I was almost getting saved, you know, because I said, I, 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 I got to get saved. But I really understand the flesh, and that's why we got to talk about it now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen. Mm. Praise God. Um, listen. Uh, uh, praise God. Listen. Uh, uh, a stronghold, if a stronghold is in your mind, it's... It is something that must be recognized. It must be recognized. Or even a strong man, it must be recognized. Because, like I said before, that stronghold is that, 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 that place of security. That's where the enemy hides. And we got to get them out of there. We got to realize, like when, the, uh, uh, I'm not going to turn to it. You can look at it in your notes and uh, you can write it down in Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter uh, 16, verse 16 talks about a woman who had the spirit of divination. And she was following Paul and Silas through their missionary journeys. And she kept saying, these are the men of the most high God. And what she was doing, she was being very sarcastic. She had the spirit of divination on her. And she was actually, that was, she was making money for her. She was a soothsayer. She was making money for the guys who paid her to tell them the, tell them the future. So Paul, a couple of days go by, and Paul says, he didn't say to the woman that she had a name, but he said, he said, he said, he turned and he said to the spirit, you got to go. That's why we got to recognize certain spirits. All of them, matter of fact, we got to, we got to recognize them. We got to recognize when there's a spirit of lust, there's a spirit of fornication or adultery or, or, or murder or strife. We got to recognize these things because they get in there. Listen, they want to destroy us. They want us to take us off the path of the path that God has ordained for us. Amen. They want to, they want to disrupt our uh, going forward. And they will not stop at anything because welcome to the battle. Welcome to this war. Welcome. It's not going to stop. It's not going to be a place where you're going to get saved. Well, you know, I'm just going to sit over here and I'm going to just stay away from people. No. He wants to surround people. Amen. These people need to see the light of God where they can be delivered. Amen. You know, we just can't hide ourselves. We got to deal with the situations on our plate. But I see so many people suffering from these things. Okay, y'all, 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 okay. I'm trying to slow down here. Let's mm, praise God. Look at Romans 8. We was in Romans 7. Look at Romans 8. Ah, oh, praise God. Praise God. Listen. Look at one. There is, there is therefore... Now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Go to verse 3. No, 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Watch this now. Very careful. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. His flesh wasn't sinful, but it was in the likeness of Because he was perfect. Amen? Mm -hmm. Condemning sin in the flesh. 
In other words, he nailed it to the cross. That the righteousness of, uh, of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not to the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now look at verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So that's why they do the mind. That's why Satan attacks our mind. That's why we got to clear up all these things. And, and you know, I, I love that one of my favorite verses is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, where it says, Examine yourself, whether you be of the faith. So that gives me all. I ain't got no time to be looking at you, examining you. I got to examine myself. Amen. And well, how does that happen? By reading the Word of God. I don't read it to find you on this page or you on that page. I read it to find me because I need to be delivered. I need to see what's, what's ailing me. I need to see the things that's causing me to act up and not have control of my mouth. I've got I to gotta recognize these things. Yes, you see what I'm saying? Because I don't want to give the enemy no weapon that he can use against me. Because he's he looking for a place. It says, Go get no, don't get no place to the devil. He's looking for one. And it usually goes back to that same thing that you and I don't recognize. That you and I, that that same thing that's a stronghold, that's hiding in our mind, or that strong man who has control up in the corners and the crevices of our thought life and hiding. And every time we get closer to God, what does he do? He comes out and says, oh, you ain't, you're going too far. Get back up in there. Causes your, your 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 attitude to change, or you understand what I'm saying? He causes you to to act out of character. This is the battle, man. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So we this is why we have to remain in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, so He can show us these things. He can spot these things out for us. We don't we don't go looking for them with a flashlight. It's by the Word of God and the Spirit of God who gives us the spirit of wisdom and revelation of himself. Oh, my goodness. Listen. Mm. Y'all here? Amen. Praise God. Listen. Oh, Lord have mercy. Mm. Um, I'm going to speed up here a little bit here and, and to keep us, uh, see what's going on here. The Bible tells about, um, listen, if a believer does not know where they have been, they can't know where they're going. All right? Demons who once inhabited our minds on a daily basis would try to come back. To try to pull us back. All right? The Lord poured us from the world. Amen? We've been translated to the kingdom of His dear Son. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been away from things for a while. Then, as we can, if we don't feast on the Word of God, amen, the enemy uh, uh, has a kind of a foothold. Because now... When we don't feast on the Word of God, what are we doing? We're feeding the flesh. We're, 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 the appetite is for the things of the world. We don't, we don't say that out openly, but our actions demonstrate that. Come on. Our actions, it's, you know, I don't care what people say, it's how you act. It's what you do is who you are. I'm a believer, but what you doing? <laughs> you know? So listen, praise God. God is so good. So, hmm. So you look at that, and uh, uh, I want to get over here. I want to I want to stay on course, y'all, because I want to get this thing straight here. Um, it says here. Now, when we talk about um, in that verse five, verse that uh, no. If how can we cast down imaginations? How can we cast them down if we think that imaginations is actually a reality? But it's an imagination. But to us, it's so real. Now, this, this, this is bondage we're talking about. We've got to be released from this. Because, you know, the Bible tells us, actually in Romans 8, that same chapter, he, didn't, he removed us from the, uh, what? from the bondage of fear. Fear is not knowing, you see. And so many people are operating in fear because they don't know. But fear is just the unknown. But the Bible wants us to know. That we ain't got to be afraid of that. We don't have to stand for that. That spirit didn't even, the Lord didn't even give us that spirit. So Satan wants to keep us in that unknown state. He wants to keep us there so he can pick at us and cause us to be weak in our understanding. To cause us to be, become paranoid. To cause us, now watch this. 
Watch this. Cause us to uh, remain in situations or relationships because we don't want to be alone. Mm. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. I've seen so many people put up with stuff because they don't want to be alone. You, you hear the stories. Oh, he, he loves me, but you got shades on because he punched you in your eyes. He's, a, he's abusive. Well, that doesn't make sense to me. You see? Because, you know, uh, uh, the people have a, a self-esteem about themselves because they're not looking themselves into the eyes of God. You know, I can have a high self-esteem about myself, but if it ain't according with the Word of God, I'm, I'm nothing. Without Him, I can't do nothing without Him. He, he's my strength. You know what I mean? He's my provider. I don't do anything. And once I keep that humble mind, then he, can, he will exalt me and give me more light yes. and understanding what this enemy's trying to do to me. Because yes. yeah. none of us, once you confess Jesus as Lord, you have been, you are, you are on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Ain't no one on the sideline. Ain't no one, you go, uh-huh. You got to get out there and you got to fight. <laughs> you got to fight, amen. Mm -hmm. we, we, we get, we're getting somewhere, right? Let's go, uh, uh, let me see here. I looked at that thing. Praise God. Uh, mm. The flesh wishes to lead man to sin. But spiritual, the spiritual life longs to lead man to righteousness. That's at Galatians 5, 17 we just read. Flesh against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. Amen. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter um, 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Amen? Amen. He says here in 4.16, he says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish. That's the flesh. It's perishing, y'all. You hear what I'm saying? Outward man is perishing. I don't look like I did when I was 20. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's sad to see people my age trying to look like they're 20. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, how'd you get a, 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 a fro? <laughs> Yesterday, you didn't have no hair. <laughs> how that happen? <laughs> For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. That's our responsibility. The inner man has to be renewed because the inner man is the one who's actually leading us. You see? He's, he should be leading us. But people are more concerned about the outward man. Amen? And not concerned about the inward man. The outward man is going to perish. What does that mean? It's going to cease to exist. Amen. <laughs> it's going to perish. But the inner man is renewed day by day. That's why Paul says, no longer I who live. And that's why I said in that Romans 7, he says, I see a law remember, he says, no longer I who do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now, when I sin and I fall to it, and I, you know, the whole complete cycle of went, first thing I say is, okay, you got me on that one. You won that one. Now, I, I realize how serious this is. You see, I, I realize how serious this battle is. I just can't say I give up. I got I to gotta fight the good fight of faith. I got to stay focused. You said in your testimony, it's like you got to stay focused. You got to have an obedient heart. You got to be focused on You just can't be just let things just happen, you know, because it feels good. How many things in your life felt good and it wasn't good for you? And you couldn't wait to get away from that thing that felt so good. You didn't want it no more. Come on. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, we ain't touched on some things. So it's two classes of believers, y'all. Spiritual and fleshly. A spiritual believer is the ordinary believer. The fleshly believer is, is the abnormal. You know? God does not impart his life to us to educate and train the flesh. Rather, it is given to overcome the flesh. That's why we get in this education. That's what we're learning about some things. And I'm going to say some things here near the end. 
that's going to lead us into next week. I want you to pay close attention because this is where the breakthrough is going to come. Hopefully, so far, you got some things that are breakthrough. Listen, regeneration means to be born again as our fleshly life is born again of our parents, so our spiritual life is born of God. To be, to, to, to be delivered or born again, God first must restore the spirit position within in order that we may have fellowship with him again. Amen. That was born of spirit of spirit. That was born of flesh is flesh. Amen? God is good. Listen. Many remain babies for years because they don't believe that they have been crucified by faith. Remember we said in Romans 12, 1, present your body as a living sacrifice? Some folks still haven't done it. You can't just do what you want to do and then over here expect the Spirit is going to lead you. Because he, he said, you grieving me, man. I, I can't. I don't know what you want to do. See, this is where we make that decision at. That's why I said for years when I first got saved... You know, nobody was teaching me anything. I mean, it was all kind of, listen, it was all kind of stuff going on in that church. Fornication, adultery, I mean, all kind of stuff. Drunkenness, it was like the world. But I didn't recognize it. I was, you know, I was sincere about my, you know, reaching out to God. But eventually the church withered and it fell apart because it was divided. It wasn't standing on the solid rock, you see. And people begin to, they, they drift back out in the world. Some of them went back out in the world and never came back to the church. So to me, were they really saved? Were they, were, were they delivered? And that was, that's one of the big questions with a lot of things, is that I always ask myself, man, you saved? Why are you doing this? If God has given me power to overcome the, the, the evil one, I should be able to recognize these things in my life. Watch this now. Praise God. Amen? Hmm. Uh... Let me see here. It requires time for the power of this new life to reach the outside. When we first got born again, it's got, it required some time for us when we became, we were babes. It don't happen overnight. But with proper nourishment, proper dedication, prayer, commitment, you know, this is how we grow. But you could just say, well, you know, just think about it. We might spend 45 minutes to an hour in church on Sunday. I mean, really hearing the message, right? Really, the message time. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, okay, to an hour. Does that happen any other time during the week? I mean, think about it. Don't raise your hand, please. Think about that. That should be actually happening every day. At least 30 minutes of some kind of, because you've got to feed that spiritual man if he's supposed to be renewed day by day. If you starve him, he's going to be weak. If he's weak, the enemy's going to have more access to your flesh to come in and to, to take you away from the things of God. Mm -hmm. So it's our responsibility. That's why the Bible tells us, Philippians chapter 2, 13, it says, For it is God who works in us to do of his good pleasure. So God in the form of the Holy Spirit feeds off the Spirit of God because the Spirit and the Word agree. If we're not given the Word you know, feed into our spirit, we, we're not really giving the Holy Spirit nothing to work with. You see? Yeah. We're doing a guessing game. Mm -hmm. We're going by our feelings or we, we ac accepted the lie from the enemy. We procrastinate. Oh, I'll do it later. And later never comes. Watch this. God is so good, y'all. Amen. Mm. Oh, praise God. Let me ask you a question here. We get ready to close up until next week. How do you know you're saved? Right? How do you know you're saved? Some pray the prayer in Romans 10, 9, we said earlier. Some say I was baptized in water. But how do you know you're saved? Once you go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. We hear it. Don't miss this part. Whatever you do, don't miss it. Because I know a message is like this. The enemy's working. Jesus. He's working for some kind of distraction. Already. Look out the window. <laughs> Who's calling me? What time is it? I know what I'm talking about. I remember sitting back in that corner, way back in the corner. You know? I couldn't wait for the message to be over because that word was smashing my conscience. 
like, please, Pastor, stop. <laughs> and then you hear something like, who told him about I was doing this? Nobody told him. Yep. It's the Spirit. No, that first verse we read there, in that verse 25 of Matthew 12, remember? It said the Lord knows their thoughts. So the Lord knows all about us, man. We can't hide from nothing. Where did I say go? Peter. 1 Peter. Yeah, 1 Peter 2. Watch this. Amen? 1 Peter 2. Look at here. It says, praise God. Praise the Lord. He says, Wherefore, lay aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, if so be you have tasted the Lord, that the Lord is gracious. Now, one of the things here that's important that we got to see here, and I want to I, I want to read this to you, okay? Uh, it's best to read it instead of trying to explain it, because when I wrote it down, is I want to really get it. The eyes of the child in the eyes of the mother, you can, you can see how relaxed and settled they become when they're nursing. Now watch. You know, you all seen it. You know, the baby's nursing, the mom's nursing the baby. And, and you ever see the baby just like, like in, like in la-la land, like they really, they enjoy this. And then they gaze up to the mother's eyes and they're like, and they stop. And it's like, then they quickly go back to what they were doing because it's like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> you say, this is, I'm really enjoying this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, they have a desire to want the breast milk. And, you know, when, even though when the mother is, is done, the baby's like, nah! You know, What's going on? I want more. You know? I want, I want more milk. It's like you take a bottle from a baby, from, a, from an infant, what do they do? They're like, oh, no, no. Well, shouldn't you give it back? They're like, they're subtle because this is natural for them. So when a person is born again, <laughs> feasting off the word of God is natural. When a person don't got no time for this, Something's wrong. <laughs> Something ain't right because, you know, it's that new nature. This is, this is what, you know, it ain't just bread alone anymore. But it's the word of God. You see? Every word of proceeded from the mouth of God. That's why, see, that's why a lot of us, you know, when we're not taught and we still not really recognize some of these spirits in our life that's hiding in the crevices of our mind and our thought life, that's why as we be in the church for a while, we, we go through these valleys and ups and downs because you know um, Satan is a, he's a deceiver he's good at it mm -hmm. he's good at what he does now we gotta start taking this into ourselves and say wait a minute enough is enough that's why the Bible says put on the whole armor of God amen the breastplate of righteousness have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace to have our salvation the, 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 the shield of faith. Above all, take the, take the, the, the fill up, above all, the, the, the faith, which is ever quenched all the fairy darts of the wicked. Amen? Then the Spirit of God. This is, this is our weapons. The Word and the Spirit. Prayer. These are kind of things that we have to participate in on a daily basis. Amen. Because I'm telling you, He don't care who you don't, He doesn't care. He wants you to kill, rob, and destroy. He doesn't care how he does it. Watch this. Praise God. Mm. The child is refreshed and strengthened by the natural, by nature's own spring of life and how the baby pauses occasionally to cast a sweet, grateful glance into its mother's eyes and then with renew, renewed earnestness starts to resume um, um, to feed off the mother's breast. Amen. The child must first be born again before it seeks nourishment from its mother's breast. Likewise, must the individual be born again with a spiritual birth before he or she has any uh, 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 desire to feed upon the Word of God, to refresh and to be strengthened 
his or her spiritual body that he may grow and she may grow, increase in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see? So likewise, as the true, truly helpless baby must have his nourishments regularly, day after day, so must the born-again believer constantly be refreshed and strengthened by the life-giving, soul-nurturing Word of God. Now, watch this. Don't miss this part. This is the part we're going to actually look into next week. We here? Amen. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, 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 this is the part we're really going to look at. And I, this is, I, I'll put this in here, and I don't know if it's any, I know it's, I know it's some kind of fact because I came out of college in 1977. Some of y'all weren't even born then. But I remember the effect it had on my life, and then I, after that I went into the service, and um, I know the effect that had on me. But I was able to really interact with people from all over the world, okay? Uh, knew nothing about spirits. Knew nothing about, I just knew you was from Oklahoma, or you was from California, or Hawaii, whatever, whatever. Didn't see anything but a person. And it was funny how people from Ohio never heard of Tasty King. And I thought that was odd. Mm -hmm. And I go, you know, people from Florida never heard of a, a sub. Mm -hmm. You know, but up here, it's, it's natural to us. Mm -hmm. Just like somebody out in their state look at us like, you know, you, didn't, you never heard of this, you never heard of that. So it was differences. But I do remember in college the effect that it had on me. And it was a big effect. It was a, an effect that, you know, uh, I believe changed the course of my life. And, and I was introduced to some things that, you know, was foreign to me. Like in college, in prayer pressure, it wins. It wins. You know, in school, you can just go home. But in college, you on a campus, you there. And eventually, y'all know what I'm talking about. Eventually, you're going to participate. Because it's funny how they put colleges way out. You know, I guess the ones that's in the city is okay. But I was, yeah, I was put in a, a, a college I was at was out in the boondocks. Took a long time to get there. There wasn't no city around. It was just out in the woods. So days like this, snowy and nowhere to go. Only one store. Just had the cafeteria. That was it. You had to make out and deal with what was on campus. You know, whatever it is, you had because you couldn't go home. So as I look back at that, and one of the things I came up with as I was doing the study, the <coughs> things I got involved with, and how it affected me, and how I didn't really know what was going on, actually, um, as I look back, this is just me. Maybe some other people, but it's just me, what I... What I see now today, really what I see now, I believe college, living on campus, is one of Satan's biggest playpens. I truly believe that. Because so many people that go to school and get on these campuses and get thrust into all these different personalities, Jesus. and you all understand what I'm saying, yeah. and people, and it changes them. And, and the flesh is one door. That one door of the flesh is, the, is the how, and how demons enter in or influences. Now, I'm about to explain this to you, but I ain't going to get it all today. All right? But I'm going to explain some things to you. Um, this uh, uh, probably 75 85% of college campuses uh, committed Christians fall to fornication. Amen. Fact. Could be higher than that. This is a old reading here, a old binding here. It was probably higher than that. Kids never the same. They don't know the background of these people they got involved with. Come on. Amen. And they got all these new ideas. It's supposed to be so enlightened. Mm -hmm. But they were involved with somebody who was crazy. But they didn't know. Mm -hmm. That thing, you ever heard something transferred? You have an attitude that's transferred or personality that's transferred. Y'all listening? Yes. So I picked up all kinds of things in college. Didn't recognize it then. Even if the, the drugs I got involved with, Jesus. things were transferred. I'm like, what was going on? This is life. 
I thought, I'm, I'm, I'm in the know, you know? But when I got into the Word of God, all that stuff came to the forefront. Yes, Lord. And I started to recognize these were the things that was pulling me away from serving God. Yes. I want to do right. That's why Paul said, I want to do it, but I can't find the will to do it. Because yeah. I didn't recognize these things. But now, through the, through the, the Word of God, I'm, I'm seeing it now. I'm understanding it now. We here. Amen. I'm going to explain something to you before we close up today. Now, bear with me. We're going to move kind of fast. Let's give me five minutes, all right? Maybe six or seven. Bear with me. Go to Romans chapter six. Now, we're going to be going through the Bible. Next five, six minutes. I'm going to try to do it. I mean, well, Spirit, you just do what you got to do. I ain't going to try to do nothing. Romans 6, all right? We're going to concentrate later on uh, in this series. Romans 6, look at verse 6 and 7. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, all right? That the body of sin might be destroyed, and that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Other words, when we crucify that flesh. But we got to know what that flesh is. We got to know what these cravings are. Why, they keep, why are they coming up against our conscience? Why when I do certain things I feel guilty about it? What is that thing? Now watch this. Now watch this. Uh, Galatians 2.20. We said it earlier, but I want you to look at it. Right in your notes. Galatians 2.20. Says, are we here? Galatians two twenty says, "Praise God, Amen." I get over there in a minute. Two twenty says, "It says, listen, mm. I am crucified with Christ, and that we're crucified again." See, mm -hmm. nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ live in me, in the life which I now live in the flesh. You see, mm -hmm. I live by the faith for the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. So I love that. I live uh, uh, the life that I now live, which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. You see? Now, Galatians, uh, praise God, amen. Galatians chapter 5. We were just there. Look at 5. Look at 24. You see it? It says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust." See, if we belong to Christ, we have crucified the flesh. He's not kidding about this because this is the doorway. Now, I'm going to explain something to you, and I found this out in my studying. It's ironic how the Lord always put this in first. That's why I said the flesh is that, is that, is that, that, uh, uh, um, that doorway. Now, I'm going to show you these verses, and this is why I, I, I saw it. 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. Amen. Look at verse 13. Amen. We're almost there, y'all. The suspense is, you feel it? It's coming. It's coming. It says, it says, meat for the belly and belly for the meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Look, look at, um, uh, keep going there, let's keep going on to 14. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise us up by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body, for two saith he shall be one flesh. Y'all see that? So, Harley could be male, female. I might have been involved in with a harley. Didn't know nothing about it. Because I was enjoying the, the college life. I was, because it felt good, I did it. Amen? Amen? So what happened? I was drawn into a harley. You see? A harlot. <laughs> Whatever. Now watch this. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Now watch this. Flee fornication. Every sin that, that a man doeth without the body, but he that committeth fornication sin against his own body. We're doing it to ourselves. You see? What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, and you have been you, you which have, a, have of God, and you are not your own. 
For you are brought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, watch this. We're, in, we're, in, we're still in, um, we're in 6, right? Go to verse 9. Back up a little bit. In that same verse, Corinthians 6, 9, watch. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be ye not deceived. Now watch this. Watch the order of this. Watch the order. And I'm going to tell you about my little dream I had. A vision, whatever. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor eminents, nor abusers of themselves uh, with mankind, nor thieves, nor covenant, nor drunkards, nor failures, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Listen. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye, have been, but ye are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Now watch this. We used to be that way. Notice the order here. Watch this. Don't miss this. Nine. Be not deceived. No fornicators, no adulterers, no adulterers. Right? Now watch. Go to Matthew chapter 7. I mean Mark 7. Go to Mark 7. I know it's a lot. We're almost there. So it's a point I'm trying to make. Y'all got to see the point that I'm trying to make. Mark 7, 21. He says, for from within, for from within, watch this, out of the heart of men, besiege evil thoughts. Now you see that? That's why the Bible says, take no thought. Who's trying to give you thought? Enemy trying to get what thoughts got to do with the mind, right? Can tax the mind. Look at the first thing he says. Uh, but see, evil thoughts. Look what he says. Adulteries. Fornications. These are the doorways. How he can control us. I'm going to say this, and this is a vision that God gave me. I don't know what, I think it was in the 90s when I saw it. And it opened up my eyes. It was in a dream or a vision, whatever it was. I seen a, a couple in a uh, uh, in a hotel, and they were about to have sex. And the woman was lying on the bed, and the man was standing, you know, about to enter. And it was, uh, sorry for the language, but this is a can't see on the other way. It was, I was looking between the legs of the man, and I saw these spirits or demons up on top of this, on the back post of the bed, saying, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up. And I was like, what are they doing? What are they doing? Come on, come on. And what that meant to me was, uh, this is how they, because they want to express themselves like the Holy Spirit, they need a body. And that's what happens to us, that we weren't aware of. We get involved with people, we don't know what their past what were, we don't know who they were, but they, y'all listening? Things entered in, and they, st and they stayed there. And what happens is, we have a, a earning for these things, even after the fact when it's gone, when we're away from these people, we have the earning. And it's almost like a part of us is gone, and we're trying to get it back. Mm -hmm. And then you have this big cycle of people interacting and doing things and breaking God's law and, and, and doing this and doing that. And what happens is, we're misfits. Amen. And that's the majority of what's going on out here today. People, you know, don't realize when it's too late or they get old and they get the Urkel effect. Why did I do that? You done done it, but that don't mean it's over. That means we gotta know where we gotta know where we came from so we can know where we're going. We were deceived. We were deceived. So now what we have to do is to be cleansed. So God can show us. That, you know, life ain't over because we all, we all born into sin. We all made that mistake. Mm -hmm. So don't beat yourself up. I mean, I remember sitting in my room for days. When I came to the realization of what actually happened to me and what I did, I was mad at myself. Because I let them do this. And God was saying, hey man, that, that was part of the whole calendar. You, you had to see this so you can continue on and be led by my spirit. Because you didn't see this, you would have remained in the dark. And you would have deceived yourself. And you would have fooled yourself. And you would have never been able to follow the Spirit's leading if I didn't allow you to see it. So that's why God is allowing us to see it today in our lives. Now we're going to be looking at some things in the future. We've got one more verse we'll look at. Mark 4. We've got some things we're going to be looking at. 
and uh, to help us really see this whole big picture. Mm. Look at uh, Mark 4, and we're going to close with this. And this is how, uh, this is the, this particular verse is going to help you and why it's going to show the importance of why you need a daily dose of the truth every day. Because we can excuse this message today and say it was nice, I understand some things, but the enemy is going to try to steal it from y'all. Because it's too valuable. It's just it's so valuable. So many people, you know, they don't even, uh, uh, I don't know, they're not even getting these things in church. They're just, they don't know what they're getting. They're, they're getting slop. <coughs> these are the rich things of God. These are the meat of the Word of God. Not because I'm speaking it today, but these are things that can help people be delivered, man. I don't know why. I, I, want, I want deliverance. I don't want to go around and just, just keep giving me these same old frame of mind. You know, over and over again. I'm thinking my head all oh, something back over here again. I don't, I, hold up, wait a minute. I've been, I can, I'm, I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm not going to have that same old thing beat me down. Because on the inside of me, I don't want to do it. I want to trust God. So God, I need your power to overcome. But if I don't want to come in, I never, I never trusted in God in the first place to get me through. I'm still relying and allowing the flesh to do whatever it wants to do to me. And what's going to happen? Nothing. I'm going to remain and have an old pity party. Oh, woe is me. Look at Mark 4. Mark 4, 24. You ready? Close with this. I, I read it for you. We read this before. It says, Mark 4, 24 says, And he said unto them, 23, let's look at 23. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. What measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and to you that hear shall be more be given. Now, a lot of y'all say, well, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm going to read the Amplified Bible. Close with this. Now watch this. It says, He said unto them, Pay attention to what you hear. All right? By your own standard of measurement, that is, to the extent that you study spiritual truth and apply godly wisdom, it will be measured to you, and you will be given even greater ability to respond, and more will be given to you, to you besides. In other words, if God sees that you are reaching out for Him, and you're serious about this, He's going to give you more light. But you nonchalant, don't, you know, whatever, and don't take it serious. See, God is not going to, uh, he said, I'm not going to cast my pearls among swine. He wants those people who, you know, you, the pure in heart. He said, you pure in heart, you're going to see God. You're going to see God. You take this serious and say, God, I want deliverance. I want to understand these things. I want to know where I was so I can know where I'm going. I want to recognize these spirits that kind of that on a daily basis torment me and pull me back when I'm trying to go forward to you. I want to I want to recognize them, so you can cast them out, so you can take care of them. Amen. We have to understand this because far too many believers and they they've been in church for years, probably longer than me, and don't know some of the very elementary things of what's going on, and you can see them. It's just being deceived more and more and more. Never, that's like, how you acting? How you living? That's not even, that's not the word of God. That's why it's a, it's a grave responsibility for those who preach the word of God. You better tell them the truth. You try to worry about how it hurt, hurt somebody's feelings. Like me and Andre were talking earlier before you guys came in. I wish somebody slapped me upside my head to get this word in me. Listen to me, man. Years ago. This is, this is serious. Grab a hold of this thing. You know? Get this truth. Because I'm telling you, some folk getting garbage out here, y'all. But I thank God that we're here faithful in other churches, that we ministers who are giving the word of God are uh, sincere. Because I'm serious about this. Don't know it all. I learn every day. 
-hmm. I look at different messages and all over the world, different preachers. I'm, I'm, I'm feasting. I'm trying to get more understanding. That's what I'm doing. You've got to eat. Nobody has it all. But Christ is our all in all. So God bless y'all. And God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.